regional consumers, while not suffering the same inflation witnessed in Western countries, are paying more for everything from housing to gasoline to food. So where does this leave budgets for non-necessities like luxury items? We're joined by the president at Shalhoub Group, Michael Shalhoub. Thanks so much for being with us today. Now, Shalhoub Group is really known for its joint ventures with brands like Louis Vuitton, Dior, L'Occitane, and so many others. You have your own brands as well. During these tough economic times, are people still prioritizing luxury purchases? In the GCC market, we've seen that uh, personal luxury has been on a strong growth trajectory. Uh, we've produced a report early this year with uh, the Fashion Commission of Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Culture uh, that says that in 2021, we've seen an increase of 23% uh, versus 2019 of luxury spend. Some of the reasons for that is repatriation of spend by GCC consumers. Uh, so in the past, uh, two thirds of our GCC consumers used to be spent in London, Paris uh, and abroad the GCC. Uh, since the pandemic and due to some travel restrictions, about 60% of their spending is happening in their country. Uh, apart from that, I think that what we've noticed is better availability of stock, uh, better consumer uh, service, uh, a lot of efforts on clienteling, and, and the UAE in particular, uh, Dubai, has known uh, some great recovery of tourism in 2021. Uh, we had slightly less tourists in Dubai, but uh, those were spending more on luxury than before. So, so you're, you're winning more international market share is what you're saying. Winning more international market share and uh, in general, the absolute luxury customer has continued spending probably more than in 2019. Shalhoub says uh, that the luxury jewelry and watches segment in the GCC was worth $3.9 billion in 2021. I think that that's from the same report that you just referenced, and you had forecast this to grow by 8% in 2023. Has this forecast changed in the current climate? Actually, uh, as expected, we're seeing a lot of traction. Uh, we see some headwinds and a little bit of uncertainty with a lot of GCC locals traveling abroad for the next few months. But uh, despite some markets being behind, uh, we have in general uh, still the same trend with some markets overperforming uh, like the UAE. Overall, we're, we're quite confident that uh, we're going to reach a high single digit growth for this category over the next two, three years. And what cut do you expect Shalhoub Group would take from this $3.9 billion luxury jewelry and watches segment here in the GCC? So we've only started investing in uh, jewelry and watches. We have a successful JV partnership with Chomet for uh, 12 years now. And our plan for the coming years is to continue expanding in the network of stores within this region. Uh, the, the results of this JV have been extremely positive with 100% growth of 2021 versus 2019. Uh, we've just signed a franchise partnership with Corloff Paris uh, for the next few years, uh, especially for the UAE and Qatar. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we're scouting for new brands for, for partnerships in the near future. Uh, it's a little bit early uh, to disclose, but uh, within the next few weeks, we'll be able to announce a major jewelry maison uh, that will be joining our JV portfolio. So this is part of your next chapter of growth, and we know you are growing your, your new jewelry and watches division and working with more brands and doing business in new markets. Tell us a little bit more about the, the new markets that you plan, you plan to enter, if you cannot disclose the new brands that you're going to be working with. Well, firstly, we've made uh, of Saudi Arabia a priority market for us. Uh, it used to represent about 30% of our portfolio. Uh, we hope to develop it to represent nearly 40% of our portfolio within the next 18 months. Uh, on top of that, we're looking at 
Egypt as the next priority market and the whole of Africa in which we've uh, quite significantly invested. We've bought back a beauty distribution company based in Zimbabwe in 2019 uh, that covers today around 33 countries of sub-Saharan Africa. We've also made a significant investment in Latin America uh, where we uh, uh, own uh, half of a company that does a beauty distribution, beauty retail, and uh, fashion retail with some of the uh, high-end uh, JV partners. How much are you investing and what really gives you the confidence to do so in this current macroeconomic environment? I, I mean, a lot of your customer base aren't from the upper echelons of society. They're from the middle class and they make a big purchase maybe once or twice a year. We find it that um, in, in those climates, this is also the right opportunity to invest into high quality operations. In our experience, when it comes to absolute luxury, the impact of negative economic outlook is limited due to high disposable income of consumers who purchase those items. But those challenges do occur in premium segments and affordable luxury where we have customers that are affected by inflation and the increasing prices of necessity. Still, overall, the personal luxury industry has proven to be quite resilient during periods of inflation, unless the world gets pushed into a recession. When it comes to other risks, we are closely monitoring the mentioned supply chain situation that started during COVID lockdowns and now are exacerbated by the situation in Europe. How would you say the rise of e-commerce, especially during the height of the pandemic, has really impacted Shell Hoob's businesses? I mean, a lot of the products that you sell, especially the, the super luxury items, aren't necessarily uh, online. Well, we, we, we stick to the choices that our partners have decided to make. We have a great partner with Farfetch uh, that is a JV partner to us and uh, Farfetch has uh, definitely had some few good years since uh, the rise of COVID. Uh, with a lot of our brands, uh, the, 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 the ability to touch and feel the product is what makes the brand so valuable. And, and so that quality can sometimes be hardly uh, relayed through uh, more digital channels. Uh, with that said, we've seen an acceleration of e-com and we try to make sure that our customer has the best omni-channel experience that is suited to her needs. Now you're mentioning G JVs and you must get approached by investors. Are you open to offers from private equity investors or, or do you plan to IPO at some point? This is not something that we've currently been considering. Uh, we can never say never, but uh, currently we're in a very healthy uh, position and uh, with quite a, a healthy governance. So uh, there are no changes uh, that, that, that are on the, 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 the plans right now. President at Shalhoub Group, Michael Shalhoub, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ramya.